Hello and welcome to Universe Mode. This is ECW, the final ECW of uh, the, the what's it called? 2K14. That's the one. So here we are, and we are kicking things off with Curtis Axel. And as you can tell, for tonight, it's just myself, the living legend, Larry Crisco. Curtis Axel is going to go one on one with Diamond Dallas Page, DDP himself, after we discovered, after what I talked about on Velocity. So, that being said, if DDP gets the win here tonight, Axel will not get to go one on one with Barrett this Sunday at uh, the No Way Out. Instead, it will become a triple threat match, meaning that, well, Axel won't get a one on one opportunity and other shit. And DDP gets added to the match, which. Also adds more jeopardy on the chances of Barrett retaining his, te his television championship. But we'll see what will happen this Sunday. That is, if DDP even gets to the match. Of course, with the role Curtis Axel has been on, you never know. DDP with um, screen epilepsy going on, but hey, that's the only thing I can trade down to. Anyway, yes, he's making his way into the towards the ring now. He's now picking up an alleviating jogging pace as he gets in the ring. There we go. DDP defeated someone. Tyler Breeze on velocity in ease. And now he goes one-on-one -on -one with Curtis Axel. So, question is, will Axel be having a one-on-one -on -one match against Wade Barrett? Or will DDP add himself to the equation when we're about to find out as this match gets underway? And we will talk through the final match card for ECW on 2K14, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Anyway, after this is uh, EC3 with Brothers Clay in his corner is going to go one-on-one -on -one with the returning Eddie Guerrero. After, of course, I credited Eddie Guerrero with being the man behind the NWO. And, well, he, he wasn't. Um, I decided to then thing. That's the, yeah. I don't know what I'm going on there. But uh, yes, Eddie Guerrero is back in action tonight as he goes one on one with EC3. Tag team match then as the Revolution will take on the Ascension. Of the Revolution getting a rematch against the 1%ers this Sunday for the Stubby Tag Team Championships. No way out. Then we have a gauntlet match. Cesaro is going to take the gauntlet. The first challenger is decided by the NWO. The second challenger is decided between the board of directors and the NWO. And the third challenger is entirely my choice. I'm allowed to pick the third and final man involved in that match, so that'll be uh, nice for him. But in the main event, Seth Rollins goes two on one against Hall and Nash of the NWO. And it's not going to be a simple one on two handicap tag. It is going to be Tornado Shield rules pretty much. Like they did when they took on Austin Aries back at No Mercy earlier this year. Rollins goes two on one against Hall and Nash. And I, well, I can only imagine that's an effort to try and soften up Rollins ahead of this Sunday when himself and Cesaro meet again. Yeah, we're just doing round twos of a lot of uh, matches from uh, Unforgiven, but, you know, stay with. So, with that being said, it is time. Well, the time for talking's over. The time for the final ECW is now, and there is a lot of pressure heading into this, this Sunday. I am worried very much for it. Just for. Meanwhile, right now, DDP has actually been taking it to Curtis Axel in a relatively good manner. I was expecting Axel to put up a bit more of a fight than he has. Well, he's sort of done his uh, grapple locks. No offense to the guy. DDP has him dazed. What are we looking at? Uran I believe that was a Uranagi. I'm going to say it was. There is an eye rake by Curtis Axel now. As they just sort of stand there for a second. Go behind. DDP reverses his way out again. Rake of the eyes. Uh, punch across the face there by DDP. Of course, you know he's going to focus on that face for the diamond cutter. And that diamond cutter, as we've seen, is just very effective. Just keeps everyone down and just can be hit like that. I don't even know if the click picked up in the recording, but, you know. DDP picks up. Axel, he's looking to slam him. I don't know if he's looking for his pile drive or whatever it is, but Axel reverses Adam, pile drives him himself. DDP though slowly getting back up to his feet. Over the ropes he goes. Axel hangs on, hot shot it off the ropes, and now he goes to the outside. DDP on the inside, taunting away. Interesting camera angle there. 
Axel sort of limping his way back into the ring. DDP catches him. Tilt a world backbreaker just like that. Oh, the diamond symbol. The bang. And we know what that means. DDP has him hooked. Diamond cutter. That could be his ticket to no way out. One, two. DDP has added himself into that match. That makes it a triple threat now. Barrett, Axel, and DDP will square off this Sunday for the ECW Television Championship. Here is your winner, Diamond Dallas Page. See you in a month, all this NWO bollocks and all the problems that we're having with it. We could still find a way to put on entertaining matches. It's just not that easy. Anyway, DDP there celebrating his win. And now we'll see him this Sunday. Could DDP take home his first championship in this, new, in this universe? Could he become television champion? We'll find out this Sunday if he can beat Wade Barron and Curtis Axel. I think that'll be uh, an interesting test to say the least. I look forward to that match. But as for right now, it is time for a one-on-one -on -one contest between EC3 as he takes on the returning Eddie Guerrero. Guerrero being away now for almost two months since losing to Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. So let's see what's going to take place between those two men when they go up against each other next. Of course, EC3, well, he's not going to be happy with what's going on, to say the least, with the whole NWO problems. And then there's uh, the revolution this Sunday as well that he has to worry about. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from El Paso, Texas, weighing 228 pounds, Eddie Eddie Guerrero returns to ECW almost two months off. Of course, he went a bit loony last time he was here, claiming that he was the ECW champion when really he wasn't. And of course, Eddie Guerrero, even upon his return, has stated that he has no allegiance with the NWO. However, he does agree with everything they're doing and believes that they are doing the right thing. Probably because they're targeting Seth Rollins. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. I mean, it's the reason why he likes Cesaro, and it's probably exactly the same reason why he likes the NWO, because they are doing that. So, um, no surprise there that we can't pull, uh, that we can't call upon Eddie Guerrero for help. Good, good. I love it all. But anyway, yes, Eddie Guerrero's opponent, of course, is not going to be the easiest of guys. I mean, one, he's very, very pissed off over everything that's happened over the last few weeks. Two, he's one of the toughest guys to defeat in this universe. Three, he's one of the East Tag Team Champions, and he's got, there you go, that's three reasons, EC3. Confirmed. And approaching the ring, accompanied by the Funkasaurus, Brodus Clay, from Cleveland, Ohio. One half of the ECW World Tag Team Champions, EC3 making his way to the ring. Always nice to see EC3. Of course, himself and Brodus Clay being tagged in champions now for, oh, 100 and, I don't know, I want to say 140 something days. And I know for a fact, though, if they retain this week, if they retain this Sunday against the Revolution and are able to hold their tag team championships for just a few weeks after that, they beat Europe's finest. They will become the longest reigning East Tag Team Champions we've ever seen, which will be amazing. So, regardless of what happens at Survivor Series, if they can make it past No Way Out this Sunday, they'll have done it. So that is huge. Huge news for the one percenters. They've just got to try and get past this Sunday and get past the Revolution. But right now, EC3's got to get past Eddie Guerrero. And even during, as the bell rung, he's making his... He was running right for Guerrero and now smashing his head into the turnbuckle. Guerrero back, but he's not going to have it easy by any stretch of the imagination. Here we go. What is going to happen now? Oh, he's going to slam him down in the corner. Here's that infamous line. And paying homage to Ted DiBiase as I've always seen it with the elbow drop, DiBiase. Well, still always living on in ECW and this universe as a whole with the longest reigning. World title reign we've ever seen at 205 days, an excruciatingly long time. That could be beaten by Seth Rollins, of course Rollins is very, very close. He's on about 180, I think he's on 180 exactly if I remember rightly. But now Rollins, uh, sorry, Guerrero again.
again just slammed repeatedly into thank you repeatedly into the uh, turnbuckle down on the ground now Guerrero's gone uh, Guerrero in trouble again there's a snap mate beautifully done elbow to the face by Guerrero uh, by EC3 Guerrero reverse inside headlock gets reversed What is he doing? Oh my god! Oh! Wondrous knee to the face, followed up by a neck breaker. Beautifully done by EC3. But a spinning heel kick there by Guerrero. He's trying to fight his way back in this match. And I've only now just noticed the NWO signs. Uh, uh, what's the one over Shirts in the crowd, which is always amazing to see. And Roll will probably be in touch after that triple, uh, triple elbow drop, my Bob shenanigan thing. Oh, he's got him. He's reeled him in. What are we looking at, Brainbuster? Yes, he does. I, okay, now he's grabbing him, but he's been counted again. Roll up now by EC3. Not even a one count there. Oh my god, just slamming him down there. Oh, he's looking for it again. Could be in trouble. Big run. Big run. Knee. Neck breaker. Nicely done there. Well, that's one way to help out. And now EC3 sort of on the back foot, jockey to the leg by Eddie Guerrero, the former ECW champion. Looking to assert his authority against one half of the tag team champions right now, but it's not going amazingly, to be fair. Rake to the eyes there. Go behind by Eddie, gets Man, countered by EC3. But it's clearly just seemingly there almost to be back up for, it, for if the NWO come out. I mean, EC3 doesn't really need the help at ringside, but it's there nonetheless. Lovely elbows there. Guerrero's in trouble again, another brain buster. These guys are giving it absolutely everything they've got. And now EC3 actually looking to end it. Has Guerrero hooked for the one percent? Beautifully done there, and I think that has ended it all. It actually has, and Brodus Clay was in the way there, like an annoying shit. Thanks, thanks, Brodus Clay, for ruining that. But there we have it. EC3 is your winner. Here is your winner. Not exactly shocking. EC3 final. Thankfully, the match comes to an end. Domination is what that was. My goodness. EC3. Not giving Eddie Guerrero a wholehearted return. To say the least. Very, very ruthless there by EC3 as he shows he is more than ready for this Sunday, to say the least. He's the revolution and he's ready for if ever an NWO attack comes along again. Oh boy, they are. They are a scary threat to ECW, and we'll see what happens after this Sunday. But anyway, it is time for the Revolution to go on in a tag team match against the Ascension. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one call. On the way to the ring, the Cowboy James Storm and Drew McIntyre. Revolution ready for this Sunday and the rematch against a one percent as these two teams had a phenomenal match at uh, <clears throat> what was it called at vengeance with one percent is coming out on top well let's see if the one percenters can do that again or if the revolution are going to bring in a new era if they can stop the one percenters just shy of breaking the record for longest reigning tag team find out but right now they got to go through the ascension I make it sound like it's very difficult it's sort of an entrance and that's it but due to budget cuts we've had to remove that entrance there he is clapping away Drew McIntyre and there's James Stone being all happy but the real question is are you ready to rise I can't do it too 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 ill Victor and Colin we couldn't find Connor, but we could find Colin. That's all right with you. 
But yes, the Ascension making their way down to the ring, as you can see, budget cuts have resulted in the fact that they no longer do the explosions and pyro. We can blame Kalisto's entrance for that when the iron brew spurts up from the floor. Uh, I, I drink it all, so we can't reuse really it. And then the fireworks. and it, Well, the fire, which is just, you know, it's a bit much. But anyway, there they are now on the corners going, telling everyone to rise, which is always entertaining. And then the lights come back on, and now I think we're ready. Yep, there's the bell ring. Thanks, guys. And it's going to be McIntyre starting things off with Victor. It seems as if he, uh, McIntyre's pledging his allegiance to the, uh, to the Ascension. With the red there, is of course, that's what it means. He's about to, uh, turn heel. Jesus Christ, Drew McIntyre slamming his head into the mat. And now Irish whipping him to the corner. Victor in trouble here. Probably into the corner, into his corner now. Tag made into James Storm. We've seen him do this in the past. This is sort of a uh, more so a one percenters move than anything. That sort of uh, wheelbarrow suplex almost. James Storm now the legal man, and he is not exactly having it easy with Victor. Well, now he kind of is. Forget everything so far, I just this said. Has been a very competitive tag team match. Oh, he's in trouble now. Big headbutt they to the um, head, obviously. James Storm picks up Victor again. Irish whips him into the corner. And now, Bulldog out of it. Storm is certainly feeling the, uh, the confidence levels, to say the least. But don't get too confident around the Ascension because they can rise all over you. Yeah, that's yeah, that's actually a true statement. As James Stone flops onto the floor, they and now Connor's tagged in, and he's getting absolute shit kicked out of him. Victor breaking that up somehow, and now elbows to the face. More punches. Jesus Christ, Storm is just punching away. Storm has him gripped by the head, though, putting him in the corner. Colin in trouble. Caught with a monkey flip. Storm picks up Connor again here. Back suplex looking like. He gets it. And more punches away onto the skull. That's the one of Connor. As he gets dragged again, he's going to get. Yeah, he's put in their corner. Tag not made though. Able to burn. What was that I looking for? I don't know. Forget I even said a word. Oh, oh, okay. We got. Oh, that might be the NWO in the production facility. I don't know, but well, we're back now. We're fine. Thanks. There, yeah, big slam there by Connor. Irish whipped into the corner though. Tag made again. He's up on the. Oh dear, he's up on the. Oh dear. What an amazing move that was. Simply amazing. And now, Bill McIntyre just slamming his head into the mat as you do. There's going to be a lot of offense in this match. Elbow to the side of the head there, McIntyre. Certainly a very, very ruthless opponent in that ring. Connor, though, is actually being able to fight back right now. Tag made, though, in comes Victor. Irish whip in the turnbuckle. Victor fighting back. Oh, never mind. They've collided. And there's an Irish whip in the corner. Clothesline. 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 Repeated clotheslines in the corner. And down goes him. McIntyre has him. Oh, cranking his neck and then just hitting that backbreaker. A lot of I heart the drummer signs coming up. Everyone hearts a drummer. He's got him anyway. Future Shock DDT. I think that has ra about wrapped this one up. Cover one, two, three. Corner just a little bit too late, and the Revolution pick up. Well, an easy win, to say the least. It wasn't exactly like there was going to be a shock or anything. Revolution are ready for this Sunday, and I cannot wait for that match.
Revolution, the winners here. That will still be a very entertaining match. This Sunday between the two, I mean EC3's got his win. Revolution have theirs. Question is, which, well, I mean, which team's going to be able to do it? We will find out this Sunday, but right now, there is a gauntlet match for Cesaro to run. And that is something that I can't wait to see. Because we know the first, well, we know the first two guys aren't going to be that amazing. Because they're getting picked by the NWO. And now the waiting begins, but, uh, but the third guy is the one to worry about. The third man, of course. The irony! The following contest is a gauntlet match. Approaching the ring, representing the new world order. From Switzerland, weighing 232 pounds, Antonio Cesaro. Cesaro making his way to the ring. This Sunday, Cesaro gets another opportunity at Seth Rollins and I'm starting to have extreme worries that he has a chance of doing it because I mean Cesaro is an unstoppable force add in the fact that Rollins has to take on the end of I'm not trying to make excuses but the NWO are going to do everything in their power to absolutely soften up Rollins for Cesaro this Sunday so the question is Cesaro I imagine is probably going to get it easy who's the first guy Oh yeah, he's getting it easy. I mean, just Tensai who's actually done nothing. I mean, all he did last week was get himself involved in a match between Cesaro and Kurt Angle by attacking Cesaro. Aside from that, I'm pretty sure this is his ECW debut. So there you go. Amazing. Simply phenomenal. Can't wait for this. What a great first choice. Good job, NWO. I'm surprised you didn't pick one of your own and just have him lay down. But, you know. Well, here's Tensai. He's going to supply so much trouble to Antonio, to, shit, to Cesaro, isn't he? Here we go. Cesaro's already unloading away, and he's going to go for a pedigree, it seems. All right, then. Well, there's the back body drop. Reverse by Tensai. That's about all the offense he's probably going to get in. There's the uh, power of Cesaro. He's like, getting his way out. And now just punching away on Tensai. This is magnificent. Tensai caught and wrenched around. Neck breaker there. By Cesaro. Cesaro now just cranking his neck just for the sake of it, just showing off. Front face lock again. Tensai still trying to fight back while he can. Obviously, he won't have much longer to fight back, but you know, there's a, there's a reverse by Cesaro. And here's just his pure strength. This guy over 300 pounds just being lifted like that. And now he's cranking his neck. He's got him. Oh, God! Well, I guess that's what happens if you try to attack him during his match. Swiss death to Tensai. Pay no attention to Tensai getting up and walking out. But here comes Bram. Agreed on by the board of directors and the NWO. He's, I mean, he's a decent enough talent, but he's not anything major to stop Cesaro. You can already see he's on the floor and he's getting foot stomped. Oh, here we go. What's going to happen? Bram still managing to fight back. He's still trying at least in the corner now. Big boot countered. Bram still fighting back. This is great. Imagine if Bram... It's it's very uh, very out there, but if Bram somehow find a way to beat Cesaro, that would be phenomenal. Side headlock. Reversal there by Cesaro. Antonio! Elbow across the face there by Cesaro onto Bram. What else have we got? Oh, God, stun gunning him onto the ropes there. I rake by Bram. Well, I mean, you know, play dirty, why not? Better than playing hard to get, probably. 
Backing up a little bit. Cesaro. Oh, whatever it was, it got reversed by Bram. And now <clears throat> Cesaro's still fighting back. He's taking Bram to the ropes. We know what's up next. Throws him away. Swinging European uppercut. And now he hooks him. I'm worried. Is it the Swiss death again? Or are we just looking at a plain and simple neutralizer? It is the latter. Neutralizer onto Bram. There it is. Hooks the leg. So it comes down to the third man. Two, three. Bram is defeated. So let's just say, uh, well, I didn't have to make a phone call. <laughs> the third man, a man who's waited s almost seven months to get his hands on Cesaro. Wade Barrett. Oh, look at Cesaro. He's running for it. He's scared of Barrett. He's petrified of him. Oh, the tough man Cesaro is running away from Wade Barrett. <laughs> He's, look, he's actually running. He's getting up on the apron, and now he's running away again. He's just hiding. He's trying to get counted out, but Barrett is just restarting the count. Oh, this is great to see. He's back in the ring, and he's running for it immediately. Barrett going outside with him. Cesaro's just running all around. Oh, Cesaro just standing there, trying to stand on the opposite side of the ring. Oh, no, wait, where is he going? Oh, he's grabbed the ring bell. He's going to send a message. Ring bell across the face. Striking Barrett primarily in the jaw, I'd imagine. The jaw of which, of course, he broke back at WrestleMania. And now the NWO theme is being played. It's not like you guys won. It was Wade Barrett who picks up the win by disqualification. But if that's what you think, then all right. But Cesaro gets himself out of an absolute ass kick in there. From the hands of Wade Barrett. Well done, Cesaro. Well done. You live to fight another day. The question is, though, can the same be said for Seth Rollins, who heads into this upcoming two-on-one handicap match against the NWO of Hall and Nash? I mean, Hall and Nash in their debut defeated the one percenters. That's what gets me worried. But I have absolute faith in Seth Rollins to try and get the win here. Here we go. All relies on Rollins. He is sort of like our final guy, the final frontier of ECW. The last man to fight for us. And the guy who will fight this Sunday against Cesaro. It is going to be major this Sunday between the two. Rollins making his way to the ring now. A hundred, I'm pretty sure anyway, 180 days as ECW champion. I mean, if he was to defend at No Way Out, he would also find his way to the top of that list, to the top of the longest reigning champions list. He would beat Teddy BRC, but I'm just thinking ahead, because right now, there's a... That's not what we're seeing. Right now, we're being... Well, we're being wait. We're being forced to wait for the arrival of Hall and Nash. The handicap match is about to begin. Come on. Come on, guys. Still, just all this waiting. It's like they're rock stars or something. Here they come. NWO making their arrival. Here they are again. Oh boy. Paul Nash. Woo! This is what we're in for. This almost takeover of ECW started, uh, what, three weeks ago was it? Or was it a bit more than that? Was it? I'm trying to remember now. Just 
trying to think about it off the top of my head. I believe it was... Hang on. 380... Yeah, three weeks ago. Well, yeah, about three weeks ago, Paul and Nash made their arrival on ECW in the main event, took out the Kingdom, hospitalized them, and beat the one percenters in their first match here. And now, after well, having a third man of Cesaro, now they set their sights on the man Cesaro fights this Sunday. They set their sights on Seth Rollins. Rollins is not in for an easy time. We know the NWO are not going to try and soften them up. And already, Hall is back dropping his own tag team partner, probably because they found it funny to give Rollins a chance. Oh, he's, oh, he's already at an immediate height disadvantage. That's, ten, that's like 10 feet up in the air off that backdrop. Look at this, look at this. And now they've got him hooked. Double choke slam onto Rollins. This is just what to expect. Rollins might be able to fight off Hall, but just, the, just look at Nash. Seven feet tall. Absolute power. Double choke slam. And now Hall just choking out Rollins. And Rollins already having difficulties trying to get up in time. This is not what I want to see. Thrown into the ring. Hall misses the elbow, but he's caught again. What are they going to do? Double neck breaker. Really softening up Cesar uh, Rollins for Cesaro. This is not even vaguely what I wanted to see. Sling away by Rollins. Knee in the face, taken right down. Just when you think Rollins has a bit of hope. Stopped right away. Rollins springing back up to his feet. Having none of that, though. Clothesline right back down. Oh my god, he just every time he fights back, there's the other guy there to take him right down. Rollins now, fighting. Hall, caught. What is... Oh my goodness, they've collided into one another. Hall sort of being used as a human pincushion there. By, uh, by Nash. Just to send into him. Oh, counter there, but he's caught him. Oh my god, spinning back fist, like a pimp slap. Double team incoming. Oh, it's only my favorite move in the game done by my favorite team. Mmm, great. Rollins. <laughs> he has time to show off. That's how much they think they're in control. Double choke slam again. Oh my god, Rollins is not having it easy. He's still trying to fight back. Just a moment he fights back. He's stopped. He's caught. He's up in the air. Down he goes again. Oh, here we go. He brings him in. Well, I don't exactly. That's just sort of a Uranagi, I suppose. But well, he got him nonetheless. And oh, here we go. Looking for it. Ramon. Well, it's not that anymore. Hall's got him. Outside his edge. On to, on to Rollins. One, two. No, they're not done. They're not done at all. He's going for a jackknife. Jackknife. Rollins counters. Yes. Rollins fights back. Come on, Rollins. Nope. Taken right back down. Cover again. Rollins kicks out. He's taunting. Nash is taunting. He's got his back turned. Rollins has him. Seth Walker. Seth Walker to Nash. Why are you pinning him, man? Nash is just standing there. Just mocking him almost. Here we go again. Double team. Strikes to the gut now. The NWO just... Well, they're in control and they know it. And yay, double cover. In again. Oh, Nash breaking it up early this time. Seems as if he really is far from done with Rollins. Catches the kick. Rollins moves out of the way right into a headlock. Oh, got him up against the ropes. Oh, Hall hanging on. Nash has him caught though. Into the no reversal jawbreaker by Rollins, rounding down the big man, and he's got him hooked. Rollins now, Seth Walker to Nash. But look at that right away, not even time to have a pin. Hall right on him, and now Rollins distracted by Hall. He's going to take him to the outside. Sunset flip power bomb. Sling blade again. By Rollins on the outside now. Nash can just relax on the inside. Because of course if this countout goes ahead, it's the NWO that will win. This countout's up primarily against Rollins more than anything. Rollins taking Paul back into the ring now. 
Not the smartest idea, because he's left with two of them in the ring again. Big boot. Oh my god, no. Nash has got him. Looks around. Jackknife. Oh my god, no. Hooks the leg. Come on, Rollins. Kick out, please. Please. Oh, shit. They've done it. They've won. And now the audio's cut out, because I imagine that's... Yep. That's what they want to Well, the NWO have defeated the ECW champion. How about that? How about that? The NWO, there it is. The move to end it all. Jackknife. Two, three. Ugh. Paul Nash, the NWO, just defeated one of the most... Well, without a doubt, almost dominant in a way. One of the most dominant East City champions we've seen. One of the most dominant champions we've seen. Taking a lot to beat him in the past. But the numbers game gets to him. The NWO are victorious. Great job there. Just what I wanted to see. Hall and Nash defeat Seth Rollins. And Cesaro is going to be watching backstage. He's probably just got all giddy inside. That puts Rollins at an incredible disadvantage for this Sunday. He's going to be hurt. He's going to be broken. He's going to be bruised. But he goes in with a loss, and that can hurt the momentum of anyone, regardless of who they are. A loss is not something you want heading into it. one of the biggest matches of your career. Well, that's that. That is how we round out the final ECW of 2K14. With these two men on turnbuckles celebrating their win. Great, great, amazing, phenomenal. Would have it no other way. Please, Rollins, do something to stop these guys this Sunday. If you beat Cesaro, that'll put a massive dent in the NWO. Just do it. Please. That ends this episode of Universe. That ends ECW for 2K14. Thank you guys for watching from the living legend Larry Sacrisco. Take care and ta-ra.